August 20th, 2010. From the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in climatologically confused Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For August 20th, 2010, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Kagan confirmed conservatives consternated. Ted Stevens dies. So much for the bridge to the series of tubes. Quail, like father, like son, smart as a potato. Obama concurs with First Amendment. Fox News throws a rod. Press Secretary Robert Gibbs steps in. It. Hard. Spectacular Colombian plane crash, local governor and family of deceased disagree over miraculousness. War reporting from Christopher Hitchens, deathbed conversion, quote, not while I'm lucid, end quote. Gibson fails to drunkenly rant against Jews following crash, family fans concerned. Gay marriage in California? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, psych, no. Steven Slater? Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on. Let's rock! For Saturday the 14th, Doc Holliday, dead, and Dash Crofts. For Sunday the 17th, Julia Childs, dead, and Ben Affleck. For Monday the 16th, Robert Culp, dead, and Julie Newmar. For Tuesday the 17th, Larry Ellison, and Robert De Niro. For Wednesday the 18th, Rosalind Carter, and Marge Shot, dead. Talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. For Thursday the 19th, Orville Wright, dead, and Ginger Baker. For Friday the 20th, H.P. Lovecraft, dead, and Don King. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville. I'm done! We'll have stories in detail right after this. I'm an atheist. 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 On August 1st, the Convention on Cluster Munitions went into effect. Surprisingly, the United States is not a signatory to this convention. Great! The United States is one of the few countries with the capacity to project air power substantially beyond its borders and an arms industry capable of producing such munitions. The bulk of the countries which have ratified the convention are countries that currently have no practical way of violating it. That fixes it! Why would a nun turn to anyone other than God for help in a time of need? Here's me with the story. A Warwick area nun was seen being assisted by a AAA driver in this parking lot behind me. While the elderly sister refused to be interviewed, it's clear she was having difficulty with her 1990s vintage Toyota Corolla, and that miraculous intervention was not forthcoming. When asked why she hadn't turned to God for assistance, she said, quote, get stuffed, heathen, end quote. The shunned deity could not be reached for comment. Standing in front of a strip mall parking lot for some reason, I'm Paul Torville for News Undies. Thanks, me. Dick Vader. Cheney. Cheney. Former Arkansas governor, former GOP presidential hopeful, former evangelical pastor, bass player, and media personality Mike Huckabee is now known, in part, for his TV show on Fox News called, strangely enough, Huckabee. While Huckabee tends to appear more calm and uh, rational-ish than many of his Fox News stablemates, let's also remember that he was one of three candidates on a 2007 debate who raised their hands to indicate they did not agree with the theory of evolution. So, Huckabee recently had as a guest on his show, sitting down, Tim LaHaye, co-author of the delightful and disturbingly popular Left Behind series of novels. Oh, and Mrs. LaHaye, too. To say Huckabee was a sympathetic interrogator is to seriously understate the finesse with which he tossed their salads. Huckabee deftly led the LaHayes through their loony talking points and stroked them with koosh ball questions and gently supportive reaction shots. 
It was a stunning echo chamber feedback loop of hokum and humbug. The September 11th attacks left many Americans feeling uneasy about Islam. Nearly nine years later, it seems those feelings have not really subsided. Some, including President Obama, have called the World Trade Center site hallowed ground. A Muslim group has proposed building a 15-story Muslim community center, which they're calling Park 51, about two blocks from the WTC site. President Obama has now chimed in to say that religious freedom is paramount and is part of what America is all about. Should Park 51 be stopped simply because it's a Muslim endeavor in close proximity to the WTC site? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Absolutely! Jesus wouldn't allow it. Why should we? Jesus hates Muslims! I'm neither Muslim nor Christian, but I get why this is such a thorny issue. It seems to me the bottom line is this. The people who are strongly opposing this mosque thing have apparently lost sight of what America is all about. Thomas Jefferson's Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which is the precursor of the religious positions of Article 6 of and the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, spell out in detail that there can be no compulsion to follow or fund any religion, faith, or ministry, that bestowal of the public trust shall not be contingent on any religious test, that all are free to profess and maintain their beliefs, and that no one is to be molested or burdened on account of his beliefs. If the project conforms with the local laws governing land use, occupancy, building safety provisions, environmental impact, and so on, you have no grounds to try to block it just because it's a Muslim project. On a normal day, 50,000 people worked in the towers at the WTC. I'd say it's a fair bet that overwhelming majority of the world's major religions were represented there, including Muslims. Muslims are as much a part of the fabric of America as Protestant Christians, Catholics, Jews, atheists, gays, straights, blacks, whites, Asians, or any other group. To deny them their rights is un-American. That's what pig and sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Here's your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. Balsa Ball. Soccer meets volleyball meets trampoline meets gymnastics. All on an inflatable court. What could make more... Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. According to a pointless survey, iPhone users have more sexual partners than BlackBerry or Android users. So, what does it say about you if you rock a handset like this? We'll have your exclusive past cast weather in the final news roundup right after this. Most people are really creeped out by me. <laughs> Not you. No! Who's creeped out by you? That's, that's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know who that is. The neighbors to the right, the neighbors to the left, and everyone else. <laughs> that just doesn't seem right. You're such a nice guy. I'm not a guy. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here's your exclusive past-cast weather for the week ending Friday, August 20th, 2010. In the High Plains, it was cool showers to the north, hot sun to the south. In the Intermountain region, we saw sun, cool in the north, warm in the south. The desert southwest saw just about everything but snow. And that's your exclusive past-cast weather. Levi Johnston and Bristol Palin. After nearly 44 days of rowing, Levin Brown, Ray Carroll, Don Lennox, and Livar Nystead arrived at St. Mary's Harbor in the Isles of Scilly in England from New York, breaking a record which has stood since 1896. In the intervening 114 years, reliable steamship travel, cars, airplanes, nuclear power, rockets to the moon, cheap, tiny, and immensely powerful computers, cell phones, GPS, and the internet have gotten here. Finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? 
George Lucas has decided to re-re-re-re-release his Star Wars saga, this time on Blu-ray. The series is said to be coming in a huge box set transferred with the highest possible audio and visual fidelity, with mountains of bonus material including hitherto unreleased deleted scenes. The exact price or release date next year has yet to be disclosed. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. Remember, News Undies is a weekly show, and we'll be back on Friday, August 27th with fresh undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Please subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. You can always find the latest News Undies at www.newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be pestering a nun. Because they need that a little bit, I think. What I need is some coffee. <laughs>